So Jim Ross is in the ring, and uh, I, I mentioned earlier he had a, a funny line about the Michinoku driver, but for this kind of thing, he's still just the best. He's in the ring. He explains, I'm here to do my first in-ring interview ever with All Elite Wrestling. I'm here to interview one of my oldest friends, but I fear that old friend's making a bad decision. <laughs> and he brings out Chris Jericho. And Jericho acknowledges his main event career started right here in Chicago. Started, in effect, with Jim Ross behind him. And he starts running down MJF about all the things that they have in common. This is the only thing Max has over me is three victories. And he has the dates of these three victories memorized. And he's so obsessed with this. That's why he has to put his career on the line. That's why he's so desperate to get just one win against this bastard. Says he's never been complacent. That is why he's an AEW in the first place. It was a gamble coming there. No guarantee of success. Now it's the 100th episode of the hottest wrestling company in the world. And he could have a lot more great matches. He could win a lot more championships. But every time he looked in that mirror, he'd know you're the guy that couldn't beat MJF. <laughs> he does a halfway goodbye. Thanks the fans for being a part of his life. But he wants more. He's not going to let Max take that away from him. Promises Max will have to break every bone in his body, squeeze the air out of him. And finally, he says, MJF, you don't have what it takes to get rid of me. I'll see you Sunday, you little prick. It was awesome. It was awesome. I thought it was just great. And uh, I got a few things to say. First off, Jim Ross is practically in tears when he introduces Jericho. And then at one point, Jericho's almost in tears. And it just was so good that I was like, fuck, is this guy retiring? I don't think he's retiring. I mean, if you asked me what I think is going to happen, I would say I don't think he's retiring. But here's the key. There, I have doubt. Why would I have doubt? I don't have a lot of doubt, but I have, I have a little bit of doubt. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you why. The main reason I don't think he's retiring is because he's got like another year left on his contract. And that's a All lot right. of money to pay a guy to do commentary. Yes. He also just wrote a book about his career that just came out like three months ago. You could have waited three months and finished your list of matches, right? The book just so. came out. However, a guy like Jericho, someday he will retire. And the way to go out is, in fact, what he is doing right now if his last match was on Sunday losing to MJF. It's the That's Mick true. Foley thing I've talked about a thousand times. Uh, forget Mick Foley's WrestleMania comeback, which they dragged him out with a lot of money for. And when he came back later, because who cares at that point? He'd already come out of retirement. He did the stuff with, with TNA or whatever. And actually, uh, the, the match with, uh, he did, I think he did another couple WWE matches. But the point is. He matched with Orton, the, the, yes. the handicap match with Mania, yes. But his his original retirement was like one of the greatest of all time. Because he was at the top of his game. And... He was going to make a star out of Triple H, and he lost to him, and he lost to him, yes, and he yes, lost yes. to him, and he retired to him, or he, re he was retired by him. So when you think about, like, the end of the career of Chris Jericho, I mean, I picture him doing something like that, like getting somebody over with his retirement. And, sure. my God, does anyone not think that MJF is legitimately the future of this business? I mean, who better? So that's why I have some uh, some degree of doubt that he will win on Sunday. But I do largely 95% believe that he's winning and he will continue his career. But I like what I like about Jericho and the programs that he puts together, as I've said this a million times, when you book something, and I think I know where it's going, and that's where it goes... I'm pleased, not because I'm right, but because the conclusion I drew was the logical conclusion based on what you booked. So when you book something and there's a logical conclusion, and I think that's what's going to happen, but you do something that doesn't, that's completely illogical, I get mad about it. Not because I'm wrong, because it's stupid. Well, when Jericho does these programs, I have noticed, he is a very, very logical storyteller, but... I can't always figure out where he's going. And many times I think I know where he's going, but he goes a different way. But it's not a stupid way. It's a way that actually makes sense, and then it leads to something else. So I'm happy with it, even though I thought something else was going to happen. So this, this match that they have on Sunday, 
I mean, it can literally go either way. I mean, if for whatever reason he's decided this is the end of my career, I mean, what a way to go out by putting everything that you have into getting over a 25-year-old guy that you see as a potential future of this business. Or he wins the last match, and that's the end of the story, and we move on to whatever's next in the story. That's what I think is going to happen. But uh, he's been he's been so effective at his storytelling that I have legitimate doubt, which is preposterous when you think about it, I have legitimate doubt about the outcome of the match on Sunday. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.